Brad Skistimus of Five Times August joins us tonight to discuss his new album, Silent War and what else is new in the culture wars? I'm Sheila Gunn Reed, and you're watching The Gun Show. This free episode of The Gun Show is brought to you by my mug. I know, it's pretty cool. So is this hoodie I got on, and you could have it on too if you check out our special website at rebelnewsstore.com. That's where you can see Freedom Focus hoodies that we have for you, beanies, cell phone cases, you name it, all while supporting our journalism where we fight to bring you the other side of the story as opposed to, you know, being forced by the Trudeau government to fund leftist media out of your taxes. The truth is, without you and your generosity, there is no rebel news. So again, if you like the reports that we bring you and that we also fight for freedoms in Canada, please consider doing some shopping, picking up some swag at rebelnewsstore.com. We appreciate your support. fed up with constantly searching for the records you want? Yes, here's a unique opportunity to own a complete library of the world's most beautiful music. One, two, three. Shut your mouth, get in line, just behave or pay the fine. Sad little man, sad little man, you better run now while you know you can. I won't leave, I won't leave, I will not Till the raw control. Yes, I will always fight for you. I will stand here in the way. And I will not give up on you. I will shield you from the pain. Oh God, oh God, help us all. Oh God, help us all. Oh my, heavy times. Everybody's angry, living lies And you broke, your woke, broke Think you're gonna save the day You gone out of your damn mind, kids Nobody cares about what you say You ain't no leader and you ain't the boss You wander around like you're fucking lost So check your watch, turn your back Set us up for the big attack Cause hey, Joe We did it 81 million votes Shame no matter what they say, don't let the bastard get to you. So take back your freedom and fight for your life. Stand up before it's all gone. Take back your freedom and fight for your life. Stand up before it's all gone. What you just saw there is the trailer for the new album by Five Times August, otherwise known as Brad Skistimus. He's an independent musician who has really taken a stand, especially during the pandemic, in the interest of free thought and free expression. And the beauty is he's an independent musician, so he's really not beholden to anybody. And he has taken some, I guess, what would be considered controversial um, in pop culture stances on issues of COVID and vaccination and Justin Trudeau's war on peaceful protesters. But really, they are mainstream viewpoints that um, Hollywood and the music industry don't think normal people should hold. For example, Br Brad's video <laughs> for his single This Just In was incredible. Take a look at this. Just in another liar on the news Standing at the pulpit ready to abuse This just in another coward in control 
scared by the sound so he hides in a hole He'll call on the guards to trample the crowd Cause the louder they get, they silence his power Shame, blame, no matter what they say Don't let the bastard get to you He's gonna try to shut us down But we'll stand our ground hey, This just in, he'll lose This just in, another villain on the screen Acting like a hero for all the drama queens This just in another black painted face Lathered in his virtue, enslaving every race He'll send out the troops and freeze the account Says the freedom you get is what he makes allowed Shame, blame, no matter what they say Don't let the bastard get to you He's gonna try to shut us down, but we'll stand our ground hey, This just in, he'll lose If you look in his eyes, you can see he's afraid So fragile inside while the town's on parade Shame, blame, no matter what they say, don't let the bastard get to you He's gonna try to shut us down, but we'll stand our ground hey, This just in, he'll lose No, he'll never shut us down, cause we'll stand our ground hey, This just in, you lose So joining me now to discuss his new album, Silent War, and the war on the minds of our children through pop culture brainwashing is Brad Skistimus, or Five Times August. This free episode of The Gun Show is brought to you by... It's the values. You look at Western values in Western society, and these are values we could all relate to, but they're old world values of grit and community and perseverance. It's a place where you can make a living with your back and your hands and a little bit of hard work. And it's a place of opportunity. And I think as Albertans, we're fiercely protective of that. The world's energy crisis has been grabbing newspaper headlines. In a nutshell, we're running short of petroleum resources and the prices are zooming upwards. My colleagues in the government and I have come reluctantly to believe that the price of oil in Canada must go up. This was Alberta. The origin of the Alberta separatist movement begins with the election of Pierre Trudeau as prime minister. It was it was a deliberate and malicious targeting of the West, which suited Pierre Trudeau just fine, just like it suits Justin Trudeau. So joining me now is Brad Skistimus from Five Times August. Brad, thanks so much for coming on the show. I wanted to have you on the show, um, well, first of all, because you have new music out and because you are one of the few people in, I think, music, there are more now than ever before, who are outspoken about the flaws of the pop culture world. It seems to be only acceptable to have an homogenous viewpoint on social issues, on cultural issues. And so when there are people like you who sort of pop up and say, hey, wait, <laughs> there might be a different way here, you sort of become this, uh, not only a, a beacon for hope for people like me, but also a lightning rod for criticism because the arrows are all around you and they're sort of firing in at you. So I guess before I start uh, the interview and we'll talk about your new music and, oh, I want to talk to you about Kanye a little bit. Um, it, oh, I guess, what was the turning point for you? What was the thing that you were like, no, I got to speak out and I have to do it right now and whatever it costs. Mm -hmm. uh, it was towards the end of 2020, really. It was, you know, everybody had gone through that year and it was like, everybody sort of started out going like, what? At the beginning of the year. And then at the end of the year, for me personally, I was like, come on, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's time to move on. And I was, you know, looking around wondering where everybody was, you know, is nobody going to speak up about this stuff. And, um, 
you know, thinking about my kids and everything, um, the future that they had in front of them, if, you know, I, I, I say this a lot, but I didn't, I didn't want them to look back on this time wondering what daddy did, you know, or, you know, did you do anything for our future? And I had this platform. I found myself in a, in a uh, unique position to, to speak up. I don't have any, any chains to anybody, you know, I'm, I'm an independent artist. I've always been independent. So, um, you know, I, I just started sort of speaking out, out of a way to vent for myself. But then once, once I realized I was, I had, you know, I wasn't alone that took it, that really inspired me to start speaking up to let people, other people know they're not alone. You know, it's, it's so interesting because we know as parents, pop culture has such an influence on the culture, but then culture skeptics say, I, and I'm guilty of this. I don't want any part of this. <laughs> it, it's gross. Is it, you know, it's the primordial goo of evil. I'm just going to stand over here and I won't get involved. And so I really admire people who say, you know what, that's a battleground we should not walk off from. And I, I think I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think that's what you're doing when people like me are like, no, I don't want any part of this. I'm just going to stand over here and listen to 70s country music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I I, I grew up uh, just sort of in, engulfed in pop culture. I'm an 80s, 90s kid and everything that I loved growing up has been demolished or rebooted in some weird woke way that doesn't make sense. It's not about, you know, what it used to be about or what it used to represent. So everything has sort of been falling apart um, that, you know, we used to love as kids and and then it's, and it's being twisted and manipulated for a new generation and in a weird way. And, and all the new stuff is too. I mean, it, there's just this underlying uh, evil tone to that, that seems, you know, just unnecessary. So, and, and, and it's so loud and, and so in our face all the time, you can't even let your kids watch anything online because it, all of the ads, every, every ad has something, you know, an agenda behind it. So you have to be really cautious of it, but, you know, at this point, it's like, I'm just calling everything out that I see because I'm tired of it. it. Like there's just too much of it. That's like, we have to stop. We, the, the irony of this, this whole intolerant time is that we have been so tolerant up to now. That's why we're in this position now is that our tolerance of everything that was unique and different and special and whatever it was, sometimes we turned a blind eye to maybe, you know, something that was in pop culture that, you know, seemed a little off at the time. And, and now it seems like, oh, that was really actually an evil little message there or something like that. But I'm very just like uh, aware of it now and I'm exhausted of it. So, you know, I take to Twitter a lot and just rant about whatever I see. But uh, we have to, you know, at this point, the, the line in the sand has been drawn and it's like you can either keep going down this road and this path and it's going to get weirder and uglier and we're on a slippery slope or we can start calling it out now and, 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 you know, bring awareness of it to, to others that may not be awake yet or something. Um, but we have to start walking away from it too and building our own sort of pop culture, our new pop culture, you know? Uh, yeah, I, that's a very interesting point. I want to come back to that, but you know, you, one of the things that you're very uh, vocal about on your Twitter account is, you know, this drag queen performances for kids. And I think it is, it is the perfect confluence, the intersection, to use the language of the left, of the postmodern war on beauty mm-hmm. and this leftist cultural Marxist war on the minds of our children. And mm-hmm. it is just manifesting at the local library for some reason. So even places <laughs> where, you know, you used to, you used to send your kids to the library when you didn't want them to watch so much TV. And so I guess the evil forces of the universe were like, Oh, down there, that's where the parents who send their kids, uh, the parents who worry about what's infesting their kids' minds, send their kids. Let's go get those parents down there too. And uh, you know, it's, it's atrocious, but again, you, you mentioned the slippery slope. This is it. Like we're hurtling towards mm-hmm. the bottom and the snowball is enormous and the snowball is drag queen story hour. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just insanity. As you, as you were talking there, I was actually thinking about how controlled information is online and, you know, our only escape now from the information that we receive online is to go back and find those, you know, that physical information. We used to have books and records and, uh, you know, DVDs, whatever it may be. And so to have that, that one outlet, right? If you go to a library for information and it's all hard copy information. And um, I, this is sort of just a twist on what you're saying, but I was thinking like, it's weird that we can't even go there now because you know, that, that, in, that information, that agenda has seeped its way in to where it's not even about going to escape in a world of knowledge. Now, those libraries have become a, a parade in a circus for this weird agenda. Um, so it's just another battle with our kids, but uh, you know, more so uh, it's like, what are the parents thinking? Why are they bringing their kid? What parent in their right mind is like, you know what, that's a, let's go, let's take you to that. Cause I had an experience recently. I took my kids. Now I don't take my kids to drag queen story hour. I took my kids to, uh, to a symphony recently. And my eight year old son is into piano, like he loves piano and he looked at the piano player and he leaned into me and he goes, Hey, that could be me someday. And I couldn't help but think about these kids that are being exposed to what they're seeing at these drag queen story hours where there these people come out and, you know, they're, they're, they're mocking women, first of all. And, and how it's like a cartoonist, impersonation of what a woman is supposed to be. And then they're spreading their legs they're dancing to these nasty songs. How many kids are looking at them? My point is how many kids are looking at them going, Oh, that could be me someday. And every bit of information you're putting in front of these children, they're thinking that could that be me someday? What do I like about this? What do I want to take away from this? It might not be a drag queen, but it might be dancing for money. You know, it, it, it it's, it, there's many different layers to it. And uh, so it, it's shocking that, you know, parent, there's so many parents out there that are willing to even show up to these things and encourage their, their babies to hand money to these people. And, to, and it just keeps perpetuating itself. And, and it's part of that slippery slope that's just going to keep getting weirder because it won't be good enough, right? What, what do we do every time we, we push the boundaries every time. So now we're, we're slammed up against the wall right now with drag queen story hour for children. What comes after that, right? How do they push it after that? It's going to be, you know, furry time for whatever, like the people that dress up in leather dog outfits and it's going to keep finding its way further and further down the way. And uh, so that's what I'm saying. We have to stop we have to sort of say, Hey, this might be a little too much in society, you know, be yeah. be you, but yeah. um, maybe you don't have to shove that in front of other people's kids. <laughs> yeah. You know, you see these kids giving the money at the drag queen story hour, and they always have this look that they give their parents, like they're seeking yeah. approval from right. their parents. And, you know, you think about it, you think about how many people go into the family business. Maybe they're a carpenter, maybe they're a musician like your kids. And right. You know, a lot of that is because they learn to love the business, but they're also seeking the approval of their parents. Right. And I, I see a lot of that with these little people going to drag queen story hours. The same as when my kid scores a try playing rugby, she turns around to make sure I'm watching. Right. But we're not doing that with kids anymore. We're taking them to drag queen story hour and saying, here, stick this in this man's yeah. G string for approval. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uncomfortable to even say that. Like, as you're saying it to me, I'm like, why is that even a sentence in these times? It, it, but yeah, you're right. There's always that look of like, should, is this what I'm supposed to do? And, and the parents giving the okay. Yeah. When you see people doing this, you give them money and look that, you know, what is the message there? This could be you, you could do this. This is your future. I don't know what that is, is, is the message, you know, it's, it's sort of, they, they guise it with, they, they disguise it under tolerance and acceptance and stuff. And that's one thing that's okay. That's who you are. Okay, great. But they bring it out in, and present it 
in a in a ritualistic way yeah that um and it's indoctrinating you know it's not in to- it's not tolerance at that point it's indoctrinating and it is grooming and it is those words that we're using right now and uh it's it's sad that that's how we're choosing to influence our kids it's weird we've gotten to a place where you know kids used to watch sesame street when they were that age and now they're in a bar with with grown-ups watching mm-hmm. cross dressers it it just boggles the mind but i th- i think as a parent a lot of this is because maybe people from the left have kids for different reasons than i had kids i have kids to perpetuate my value system because i think my value system is probably the most productive value system where i think people are happier um but i also want to perpetuate the species i want to raise contributing happy healthy, emotionally stable members of society. And I see some people on the left seeing their kids as an accessory to their own social justice causes. If people on the left haven't self-sterilized for uh, climate change reasons, you see them raising their kids as genderless. I'm going to dress them genderless. They're going to have no gender. They're going to have a genderless name. And I say this with a kid named Riley, who's a girl. That's because I was lazy. I just didn't want to have to pick two (laughs) names. I didn't have a political agenda there. But, you know, like you see people who are raising their kids as just an arm of their social justice causes instead of this thing that you do, um, as a greater good for the culture, but also for your family. Right. Yeah. I think like to me, the goal of, of raising children is that you're supposed to be raising the next crop of society and it's supposed to be better, more well-rounded, um, you know, more in tune with goodness. And right. if you compare the two sides, how, you know, one side's raising their kids, one side's raising the other kids. Like if you look at, look at TikTok for crying out loud, oh. like those kids aren't happy. They're confused. They, they don't know who they sorry are. To, sorry to interrupt you. I look at those kids on TikTok and I say, those are future suicides. Like it, it deeply mm-hmm. troubles me. I can't even go on TikTok. I, mm-hmm. now that you're talking and again, I'm, I hate to interrupt you. I see as one side of this equation raises children as their role in Uh creating the future. It's a selfless Mm -hmm. act. And the other Mm -hmm. side sees children as a way to indulge their own selfish vices. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like, and that mindset is, is about right now because those parents, you know, that's an act for their, for, to justify their own existence. Right. If I raise, right. If I raise this person and, and infiltrate my every of course every parent has their their own sort of agenda for their sure. kids but you know there's an agenda where like you said you're trying to raise a better a, a better quality person than you even are yeah and then there's the the other parent that's trying to raise a human to justify everything that that parent has ever done in their life or who they are they need the acceptance that's why you see so many of them going after kids because a kid is a sponge and they'll just listen to you and they'll say, that's great. I'm, you know, you be who you are. Those people are so, uh, they're missing something on the inside that they have to seek validation from a child when, you know, we're supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be sort of the reverse of that. We're supposed to be, you know, validating the world for the child in a way of saying like look here's a great big world for you that sets you up so you can do great things in this world and and create another group of human beings that are even better than this group of human beings and it's supposed to stair step its way up and we're watching the free fall of society go down so it's a crazy battle now you touched on and this is something that I think the Daily Wire seems to be doing quite well. They are creating this alternative ecosystem of pop culture for people like me who say I don't want any part of whatever you people are doing, no thanks. Um mm-hmm. but they you know they're creating programming for kids and movies and you're doing the music side. Um is that the way or is just checking out like I did the way? <laughs> 
Um, I mean, I have to say it's the way. Well, we're so influenced by our uh, by the the media that we absorb. I mean, music is a universal language. I can't tell you the response I've gotten from all around the world on the music that I've released, yeah. you know, it, uh, over the last year and a half, but like, it's been incredible and it reaches people to the, you know, whole other side. Um, and, and that's the same for, for uh, movies and comedy. And I don't think it's so much that we're trying to replace anything. It's, it's just that the old way of doing things is, has just been beaten down and they won't, stop doing what they're doing and you know to the comedians that are that are on this side of the aisle they're they're doing what the great comedians always did as a musician i'm doing what i'm trying to do what the great musicians always did you know the great songwriters was they spoke up when it was time to speak up uh, whether you agreed with it or not but nobody you know very few really spoke up and the same with movies, too. You're going to see more and more movies being made that aren't really battling against woke culture or anything like that. It, they're just making what we want, yeah, what people right. want to see. That's the difference is, is pop culture isn't making things that people want. They're just making things to serve an agenda. And that's why it's crumbling. And then, and then if it doesn't work out, then they blame everybody, you know, right. the, the, it's the, it's the culture's fault for not wanting it. Oh, well, that movie had a bad opening. Well, it's, it's because of racism, you know, or whatever <laughs> right, it is. Right. You know? uh, so it's, it's weird that they won't wake up to that. But to me, it's like, well, I'm just doing it all my former heroes, you know, what I thought they were all sort of supposed to be about. And uh, it's not that I'm really fighting against or purposely going like, I'm going to fight against that culture. It's like, this is just is right to me. This is what's worth fighting for. So I'm going to put it into my music. You know, I think even just from a, a purely capitalistic viewpoint, uh, wouldn't you want to make content that somebody will consume, <laughs> right. you, you know, like in Canada here, we have our, our mainstream media is subsidized by the government and nobody watches it, but there's never that market correction that, <laughs> that uh, is required for them to fix whatever the heck they're doing over there because they always have this constant shuffle of money towards them. And I sort of see that mm -hmm. um, in the censorship homogeneity enforcement that you see in the pop culture in the United States in that, um, you know, if somebody doesn't like your stuff, it mm -hmm. it's not a flaw with your stuff. It's the flaw with the person. And we'll point over there and everybody mm -hmm. will just call everybody who didn't watch it a racist. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's just, it's so interesting to see, again, as a purely capitalistic viewpoint, you mm -hmm. don't have to make content for everybody, but you might want to right. try to make it for somebody and not alienate yeah half the people who are interested in spending <laughs> right. some money at the movies today. Yeah. You would think that they would perk their head up and go, you know, the last 10 movies really didn't <laughs> right. do that well at the box office. Maybe we should change our approach to, to what we're making. <laughs> right. You know, right. you're seeing that a lot with Disney right now. Like every move they do is a double down on what, you know, their, what their agenda is. And more and more people are dropping off. I mean, speak of, you speak of pop culture and that's like at the forefront, Disney, you know, they've got their own whole Disney culture. And I honestly, like I grew up loving Disney. I went to those parks with my family. I took my kids and uh, I was very influenced by a lot of those movies. And um, at this point, I couldn't care less what happens to that company because they keep pushing me in a direction that is like, I don't, you know, I don't want what you're making anymore and you keep making it. So that's that, you know, and I think a lot of families are waking up to that. A lot of them are leaving behind, you know, such a cherished family brand, but you're seeing that not just in with Disney, but a lot of family brands, Sesame street and PBS and everything. It's interesting because, you know, you see the success of like top gun, and they can't figure it out. And I'm like, because it's normal. It's a yeah. normal movie, like how movies used to be without all your nonsense yeah. sort of percolating in the background. It was just a movie where right. people who are want to go to decompress from the pressures of the world 
where you mm-hmm. haven't shoehorned all the pressures of the world into the movie. So there's no escape for people anymore. They Hollywood yeah. j- just cannot figure it out. Now I want to ask you because another outspoken musician and it doesn't matter where you fall down on his politics, but Kanye is part of this ecosystem building project I see um, coming out of, you know, the, I don't, don't even want to say conservative, but maybe just the free speech, free thought side of the aisle mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. with his uh, proposal to buy parlor. What do you think about that? You know, um, like I've never been a super Kanye West fan. Me I, I appreciate, <laughs> you know, I, I appreciate, um, him pushing buttons is what I sure. appreciate right now. And um, if he wants to buy parlor, all right, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's fine. I'd be interested to see what he does with it. I think, I think you need guys like that. Um, everybody's just so sort of um, so worn out with, with what already is that if Kanye West buys parlor and Elon Musk buys Twitter and you're stirring the pot up and making it different, um, I think that that's good. I think that people are just pining for, you know, a, 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 a place to speak up where you don't feel like you have to watch what you say anymore. But and there's there's a lot of them out there. There's a good chunk of social media platforms where you can say what you want to say, but they're kind of their own uh, echo chambers right now. And it's great that they're there, but you do still need to have that public discourse where you can have somebody disagree with you and you know that you can have the disagreement and that's just that you're not going to get banned. You're not going to get censored. Um, so, you know, of course, like Kanye, he, he speaks up, speaks his mind and instantly we got to cancel Kanye, you know, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> um, yeah. And so we do need, you know, I'm glad to have anybody that has that large of a platform to, to really, you know, ruffle some feathers right now. Um, I just, you know, I'm not going to agree with everything he says, but I, I you know, that's the whole point. It's right. like, we don't have, they don't have to be, it doesn't have to be, oh, he's all over on this side or he's all over on this side. And if you're somewhere in between, then I just can't. Or if you're somewhere over there, then I just can't follow him. Um, I just want to get back to that where it's like, oh yeah, they, you know, I don't agree with everything they say, but um, you know, I, I respect their right to say it and we can all just live life like we used to live life and get back to that kind of normality. I also think um, we should be graceful as we watch people evolve from, <laughs> from mm-hmm. their other side. You know, I go around proselytizing the good word of free thought and free expression. And so when we get somebody from the other side who starts to rethink their viewpoint, I don't think we should have a litmus test or a purity test for them. Let them evolve. Let them come around to our way of thinking. Let them get here. We don't have to go back and say, well, you said that mm-hmm. back then and you did that back then. Yeah. Let mm-hmm. them have their Saul to Paul moment on the road mm-hmm. to Damascus. We don't have to, you know, hold them to yeah. the woke standards, but our own version of going mm-hmm. back and and post canceling people as they change their minds and their views that we keep telling them to change their minds and their views on. Sure. Yeah. You've got to, that's the thing that I like about it. If you ruffle feathers, all you're really doing, regardless of what side you're on is getting other people to think. I think people are so stale in their brain right now with one way of thinking that, um, you know, if you can get people to go, Oh, Kanye said that or whatever, you know, whoever Mm -hmm. it is, uh, then you're cracking that egg open a little bit and getting them to to think once again. And that's the road we need to be on is, is you know, expanding our thoughts again and being willing to engage with uh, a conversation that might not be exactly what you think. Because everybody's so locked into their beliefs now. Yeah. As a Canadian, too, I always look on with great fascination when I see political millionaires because we really don't have that in Canada. I bet you can't even name mm-hmm. one and then, mm-hmm. uh, or even like political musicians in Canada who are sort of speaking out and ruffling feathers because they, we have a very small group of elites at the top and everybody wants to be invited to those fancy parties. And 
The only time you ever hear of our millionaires speaking out on issues of politics is when they go to the United States and get jobs on Shark Tank, <laughs> like Kevin <laughs> O'Leary. Uh, but they don't stay here and do the things like Elon Musk is doing or Peter Thiel or Kanye. Um, so as a Canadian, I'm always like, we need some of those guys. But we just have yeah. sort of a, a small pool at the top. Um, I, I promise you only 20 minutes. I've taken up more of your time than that. Okay. <laughs> um, Brad, tell us about your new music coming out. And uh mm-hmm. Why? Why this? Why this album title? So I have an album coming out first week in November called Silent War. There's a song called Silent War on the album. And this this album actually pulls together all of the singles that I put out over the last year and a half, collects them into one spot um, with with a couple more new songs. And uh, it's, it's just sort of a way to document everything that I've put out. I've sort of been writing an album in real time over the last year and a half without realizing it. And then uh, people started asking, you know, where's the album? So I wanted to put them together and it's, it's been an interesting project because I, I put the track, the track list in the order on the album is the order in which I released the songs. And it sort of tells a story from the beginning of where I started out as a songwriter and um, what has sort of happened and unfolded over the last year and a half. Um, so, you know, it just seemed time to put these songs together into one collection. It's called Silent War because of the song Silent War, which is essentially about what we're facing. It's a psychological war. Everybody's online. Um, you know, that's the battle at hand right now. It's a different kind of war than we've ever fought. And, um, you know, being locked inside our homes, um, you know, that's the battle at hand. Everybody sort of feels locked behind a screen in a way and and the way of reaching out is through our computers and our screens now now where can people get the album you actually have it in vinyl old-timey old-fashioned which Mm -hmm. is great um Mm -hmm. and your merch is incredible the justin trudeau (laughs) wearing the headdress (laughs) t-shirt is great uh how do people support your independent work Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go to five times august.com, just the main website. We've got CDs and we're crowdfunding the vinyl. We've got to pre sell 200 copies. It'll be super limited edition, um, but the CDs will be available on the website and um, it'll be on all of the uh, digital music platforms as well. So, but yeah, I kind of wanted to. I wanted to take these songs and put them into a physical format because, you know, I want to, that's another thing that, that uh, pop culture is not doing anymore. They've sort of abandoned holding the piece, you know, holding a record and listening to it. I kind of wanted to bring that back and holding a CD and reading the lyrics as you listen. I wanted to bring that back. So um, get that physical copy if you, if you want it. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I was thinking about that the other day, just pulling out the, the sheet the liner notes from a mm-hmm. CD that used to be so gratifying when you took the plastic off a CD and then you ripped right. the liner out to make sure that you actually had the words you were singing. Right. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was yours though. You know, it yeah. was your copy and uh, you could write in it or staple it on the wall with a bunch of other album covers. And uh, you know, that's something that I've always loved about music was the actual physical copy of it as well. And so it it creates an experience. So hopefully I can deliver that experience and kind of guide us back towards that kind of world of pop culture. We put on a record and listen with headphones. I got it all behind me anyway. (laughs) Well, Brad, here's to tradition and our little efforts to bring it back. Uh, You know, we're big fans of you here at rebel news. You are, you know, I guess, you know, carrying on our journalistic mission here to tell the other side of the story. You're saying there's another side uh, to pop culture and there's another way of doing things. And, uh, you know, I embrace those things. Brad, thanks so much for coming on the show. And we'll have you back on again very, very soon. Great. Thanks for having me. This free episode of The Gun Show is brought to you by... Adam Sos here for Rebel News. You know, our company is growing quickly and we'd actually like for your company to grow too. That's why this ad space that I'm speaking through right now is actually available for you to purchase. So instead of people listening to me, they could actually be learning about your company, learning about your business. If this interests you, if this is an opportunity you'd like to capitalize on, send us an email at ads at rebelnews.com.
Well, friends, we've come to the portion of the show where we welcome your viewer feedback. You see, I'm like the mainstream media who are just all too happy to take your money to produce something you don't want, but then tell you to shut up when you complain about the things that they're producing with your money. I actually want to hear from you. I actually care about what you think about the work that we're doing over here at Rebel News. So if you want to send me some viewer feedback, it's really easy. Sheila at rebelnews.com. That's my email address. Put gun show letters in the subject line so it's easy for me to find because I do receive hundreds of emails a day and I don't want to miss yours. Now, one of the other ways that you can leave us for your feedback is to comment on our Rumble or our YouTube videos. I do go looking over there for those. Uh, today's comment actually comes from YouTube and I'm not one to support YouTube. It's a censorship platform, but today's comment was just so great that uh, I'll make an exception just this once. And it's on my interview last week with my friend and colleague and our chief documentary filmmaker here at Rebel News, Kean Simone, on his documentary called Ungovernable. It's about Alberta's quest for independence and how independence means different things to different people, but it's for Albertans to chart our own path forward. And largely for us, I think as Albertans, we just want to be left alone. And being left alone means a lot of things to a lot of different people. But it is my personal political philosophy. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's it. Leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. And uh, don't use the government to make me care about the things that you care about. Because I don't like that. And uh, a government that cares about what I care about is a government that is way too big and way too expensive. Anyway, let's read the very great comment that I found on YouTube. It's from James C. And it's a quote. He writes, the most terrifying force of death comes from the hands of men who want to be left alone. They try so very hard to mind their own business and to provide for themselves and those they love. They resist every impulse to fight back, knowing the force and permanent change of life that will come from it. They know that the moment they fight back their lives as they have lived them are over. The moment the men who wanted to be left alone are forced to fight back, it is a form of suicide. They are literally killing off who they used to be. Which is why, when forced to take up violence, these men who want to be left alone fight with unholy vengeance against those who murdered their former lives. They fight with raw hate and a drive that cannot be fathomed by those who are merely play-acting at politics and terror. True terror will arrive at these people's doors and they will cry, scream, and beg for mercy. But it will fall upon the deaf ears of men who just wanted to be left alone. He says the author is unknown there. But it is true. You know, when, and I'm not saying the people at Coots were involved in any violence. In fact, they were peaceful, I think, to the bitter, bitter end. But... When you are compelling people who want to be left alone to finally act, you're dealing with someone that you have unintentionally radicalized and so help you God. Well, everybody, that's the show for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see everybody back here in the same time, in the same place next week. I should tell you, if you want tickets to the last showing, in-person showing, of Kean Simone's documentary, Ungovernable. Go to albertadocumentary.com. We have one last showing and it's at Church in the Vine in Edmonton. For dates and tickets, it's at albertadocumentary.com. And as I always say, don't let the government tell you that you've had too much to think.